question. Are you aware that the screen that you stare at for hours a day emits blue light that can cause digital eye strain, headaches, and blurred vision for some people? Blue light even contributes to anxiety and depression. It was affecting my sleep. And you may be in the same position. Blue Blocks was created to change this with high quality lenses made in a specialized optics laboratory in Australia. There are 40 frames come in prescription, non-prescription, and readers. So you're gonna find exactly what you need. I'm wearing the Summer Glows, my go-to for computer work. They keep my eyes fresh and improve my sleep. Blue Blocks is also giving back by working in partnership with Restoring Vision in their Buy One, Gift One campaign. For each pair of Blue Blocks glasses purchased, they donate a pair of reading glasses to someone in need. Get your energy back, sleep better and block out the unhealthy effects of blue light with Blue Blocks. That's Blue Blocks, B-L-U-B-L-O-X dot com slash Chael, or just click on the link and make sure you use the code Chael to get 20% off your order and enjoy free worldwide shipping on any orders over $115. Okay, little time has passed to digest what happened over the weekend, and it's a lot stickier of a situation then you may see as a viewer. You may see it as a viewer and go, what an unfortunate situation. What do the rules of Nevada say? Okay, poke in the eye, it was a no contest, and I sure hope that Blahal Muhammad is okay. You're right to do so. I'm just sharing with you, if you hit a hard stop right there, you're going to miss the repercussions of that contest in this way. What happens now? And as I see it, you only have two ways to go here, okay? Leon Edwards was said, if he beats Blahal Muhammad, and it was said two different ways. In one press conference, it was said, if, he, if Leon beats Blahal Muhammad, he will go on and fight for the world championship with Kamar Usman. It was said another time, if he dominates Blahal Muhammad, he will go on, meaning Leon, fight Kamara Usman for a world championship. Great, hold that thought, though. As much as we, the jury, who are going to make our decision and anoint somebody the new number one contender. As much as we are told to strike what we saw from evidence, rewind it like it never happened, you only have two options here, okay? Leon moves on and fights for the world championship, or Leon and Muhammad have to redo the match. Hear me out, because if what you're, and the reason I say you only have two options, and the reason I want to bring this to the forefront of your mind, all right. At 170, there's not a lot of good options right now. In all fairness, there's a whole bunch of guys that don't want to fight a whole bunch of guys. Leon will do the fight. Kamara will do the fight with Leon. Okay, great. Solve a problem. But if you're arguing that Leon should not get the title fight because it was a no contest and he therefore did not satisfy the predetermined criteria that he must dominate or beat. Officially, he did not beat Blah Muhammad. If you are subscribing to that, then you're locking yourself in that they must rematch. I mean, if you're going to subscribe to the theory of the rules and the bylaws and the policy of the state of Nevada that oversaw this and had the rule for how you would remedy a situation such as an unintentional eye poke in round two, which is not enough of the contest is completed, no contest. And I bring that to you because I believe after round three, you actually turn to the judges' scorecards. Do not quote me on that. I know I'm right in some jurisdictions. I believe in Nevada. If, if you hit round three or if it's the completion of round three, you can turn to the judges' scorecards. Not what happened here. I bring this to you only because you don't really have a third option, okay? If you find yourself saying, I don't think Leon should, should move on and fight for the championship, in all fairness, you're a straight-up jerk, and you know you're being a jerk. But a jerk still needs an argument to hang his hat on. And you have one, which is he did not beat and or dominate Muhammad. As a matter of fact, it was a no contest. But that automatically defaults you into saying they should fight again. I mean, look, in all fairness, when those are your options, I don't know if any of you wanted to see those guys fight the first time. It was nobody's plan. It was a mix-up, and it happened because plans didn't go as planned. So I only bring to you, if you're telling me you want to see them fight again, I would, I would smash back in your face. You didn't want to see it the first time. Both of these guys can go on in a very good place. 
I have literally never seen anybody do more with an opportunity than Blaha Muhammad. I couldn't be prouder of him, quite frankly. To use that word, I could not be prouder of the way he saw the cards dealt to him and he played them all the way down to the fight. I mean, he was trying. He was trying with the number three guy in the world. And before you pass judgment on him, there was only one completed round. I think if anybody was going to gain favor in the championship rounds, so we'll never know, right? We'll never know. But I would like to say something nice about Muhammad, which is I think if anybody was to gain favor, at least logically thinking in the championship rounds, it would have been the guy who's been active, not the guy who's been on the bench. I mean, not for nothing. Muhammad looked very good, and Muhammad did a wonderful job with that opportunity. I don't know that him rematching Leon would make a level of sense for anybody. Because don't forget, if you're arguing that they need to rematch, you want to do same-same. It's not going to be same, same, because the circumstance for Leon is going to be drastically different. If Mohammed and Leon rematch, there's not a reasonable belief that we would have as the audience that that's the fight that should Leon win, it catapults himself into a world title fight. I mean, it seems like we're there. It seems like it's decision time. And as I'm looking at 170 pounders, I'm seeing some real fun. Gilbert Burns is ready to go with anybody anybody. He legit is ready right now. Colby Covington can beat anybody, but maybe he isn't quite as open to all of the, all of the different pairings. It looks like that's what's going on with Masvidal too. Looks. We have very little information on Masvidal. We have very little information on why he is not in there and more active, but we can look at him and, and acknowledge he's the second biggest star in the sport. It would only make sense to want to get him busy, but we don't see him busy. Look, 170 is a little bit strange right now. That's the offering that I'm making for you. Leon makes it less strange, not to mention gives the champion of the world, Kamar Usman, who's done nothing wrong and everything right. It gives him some kind of clarity and something to do. Think that over, but hear me out on this. Hear me out on this. This part I am right about. The rest can be debated. You have two options. You rematch Blahal and Mohammed. Blahal and Leon, or Leon fights for the belt. 